So what they did, Skippy Lee, I'm doing my own video, so I turn it on and then I can come see you. So what they, Kuragis. Optime sum. I am very good, and I hope you are too. Kuidaki, Stephanie. Optime? Hope so. Kuidaki, Haley. Bene valeo. Gratias. I would expect to hear that from Haley. Uh, um, back there. Quises. Quises. The boy sitting next to Katie. Quiz us, Chase? <laughs> right? Chase Zoom, Discipula Zoom. Uh, quiz us, Sophie. Lita. I thought so. Uh, quid Faki, Zifran. Mm hmm. Yes. I thought so. Scribo. Quid Faki, Michael. Silas. Quid Faki. Ludo. That's what I thought. Ludo, do you remember what that means? I am playing. Are you doing a lot of playing outside? All right, quid vacis, JT. Laboro, good, good, hope so. Uh, quid agis, Ray. Optimo sum is better, the answer you better say. And uh, what about quid vacis, Ray? Dirigento laboro, I hope so. He's at home working with my mom, his grandma, and I'm at school making videos for you. Here we go. What about uh, Daniel? Quid Fakis? Quid Fakis? Ludo? Yep, Daniel likes to play ball, doesn't he? Uh, what about Quid Fakis? Sarah? Hey, Sarah. Quid Fakis? Quid Fakis, Sarah? Scrivo? Yep. Writing your lessons, doing a good job, getting your homework in. I hope so. Quidagis, Sarah. And Quidagis. What about Quidagis, Priya? Quidagis? Optime? Oh, very good. I hope so. Do you know you live right around the corner from me, Priya? If you ever need help, just give me a call. Anytime. All right. Quid Fakis, Alyssa? Quid Fakis? Lego Escribo, I believe it. She's a good student. I am reading and I am um, writing, right. Quid Agis, Katie, Lexi, Feliciano? I bet I know the answer for that. Kuelai Laitai Sunt, right? The girls are always happy, definitely. All right, Quid Fakis, Timothy. Quid Fakis. Dirigente Laboro, hope so. And quid fakis, Emma? Riedel. That's what Emma does. She smiles. She doesn't talk. I hope you all are doing well. And I hope you're getting all your work done and getting it homework dropped to Ms. Schultz. All right, today we're going to have a little review lesson. Let's start with saying Exodus 20:12. Ready? Anora patram tuum et matram tuam. Utsis longeus super terum, quam dominus deus tuus dabit tibi. Do you remember that? I hope so. All right, we're going to have a little review on some of our cards, and then we're going to start chapter five. I sent some notes home with you for chapter five, vocabulary notes, chapter five, and there are a few new things in chapter five. Let's see what they are. Look at your list. We learned about verbs. What do we need to remember about verbs? Hmm, right. Definitely need to know the definition. A verb is a word that shows action. And in Latin, you have to remember something about the ending on that verb. And what is that? Do you remember, JT? Right. The ending on a Latin verb tells us what? Everyone say it together, ready? Who is doing the action, yes. The ending on a Latin verb tells us who is doing the action. So let's say those endings together. Ready? O, S, T, M, U, S, T, I, S, and N, T. All right, so if the verb is ending with O, who's doing the action? Sophie? Right, I am doing the action. All right. Then we also learned about infinitives. Ooh, 
That's a difficult subject, but you're smart. Fourth graders, especially this class, are smart. And infinitives are the word to, T-O, plus a verb. To run, to walk, to play, to think. Hopefully you're doing a lot of thinking. All right, let's look at this list of infinitives on our chapter five notes. Amare, to love. Cantare, to sing. Curare, to run. Descendere, to climb down. Dormire, to sleep. Don't sleep too much. Get up early, get your work done in the morning. Facere, to make or to do. Festinare, to hurry. And winere, to find. Lavare, to wash. Propelere, to push. And quiescere, to rest. All right, then another kind of verb that we've been learning. So we learned about just the basic verbs. We learned uh, the basic being verb. You should remember that. Let's all say the sum verb together. What is that? Sum, S, est. Sumus, esti, sunt. It is not in on this page of notes, but you will find that in your chapter three notes. Hopefully you still have your Latin notes in your binder. Sum es est, sumus esti sunt. Sum is what? I am, correct. Es, you are, est, he is, sumus, we are, estis, you are, and sunt. Correct, they are. All right, so those are the being verbs, the action verbs, the infinitives. We've also started talking about impersonal verbs. Do you remember impersonal verbs? They're not personal impersonal, impersonal verbs. Uh, in Latin, those are verbs that have a subject of, who remembers? Timothy? Right, it's a subject of it. Okay, so let's look at those in our notes. Pluit, it is raining. Tonat, it thunders. Ningit, it is snowing. Difficile est, it is difficult. Facile est, it is easy. Necesse est, it is necessary. Mihi placet, I want. Okay, or literally translated, mihi placet is it pleases me. These are the two new words that they introduce in chapter five. Mihi placet and tibi liket. Okay, so the verb itself, placet and liket. Placet pleases me. Okay, it pleases me. And liket is you are allowed or uh, that liket is the same root word in our word license which means you are allowed, like you are allowed to drive a car. If you get a hunting license, you are allowed to have a gun, to shoot, whatever season that is, deer, whatever. Okay, so liket, we get our, our word license. So mihi placet, I want. So, and then literally, literally translated, it's, it pleases me. We just don't really speak that way. So it's better to translate it, I want. And to be liket, you are allowed. All right, so I wrote some sentences on the board. Let's look at these. Number one, cotidie pluit. Cotidie pluit. Cotidie is an adverb. It's in your notes. And who can translate cotidie pluit? Right. Good job, Stephanie. Every day it is raining. Every day it is raining. It has been raining a lot, but today it is nice and sunny. Yay. All right. Next one, number two. Hodie non ninget. I'm happy about this. Aren't you too? Now that it's April? Yes, definitely. We're done with the nix. N I X. That was the noun word for that. Snow. All right, so can translate this. Hodie non ninget. Did anyone get it right? Michael? Yep. Today, it is not snowing. This is the verb for it snows. Okay, so today it is not snowing. Number three, mihi placet, canem optimum consumere. All right, here is the new verb in chapter five, the mihi placet. And in your notes, like we just said, it means I want or it pleases me. What is canem? Take that M off, cana. We all know what cana is, right? Right? Oh, yes. Kaylee? Yes, Kena is dinner. Optima is very good. And consumere, hmm, that's an easy one. Consume, do you know what it means to consume? Yes, to eat something up. All right, 
or to use something of. So consumere means to eat. So I want, mihi placet, or it pleases me, I want to eat the best dinner. All right, or the very good dinner. I want to eat a very good dinner. Number four, tivi liket ad wilam curere. All right, new verb, here it is. The liket, look in your notes, you are allowed. Tibi like you are allowed. Curare. Do you remember what curare means, Sarah? Right. Curare is to run. So curare. Ad wilam. To. That's a preposition. Ha ha! And you're learning prepositions now in English class. Are you learning them? Aboard, about, above, across, after, against, along. All right. Hopefully. Uh, ad is to. It can mean to. It can mean. To, it can be translated towards. Uh, two, and what is wila? The M is there, remember? Why? Right, it changed its job in the sentence. Exactly. Okay, so it's the object of the preposition. Oh, ho, ho. see how all this learn intertwines? If you're paying attention in English class and in Latin class, they kind of go together. Right, all right, so to the house. And what is this one? That one's the infinitive, to run. Okay, to run. So, put it all together and we get, you're allowed to run to the house. Number five. Ne que se est diligente laborare. Here's another impersonal verb. This impersonal verb, ne que se est, that's an easy one to remember. It is necessary. It is necessary, what? To work, yes, diligently or carefully. All right, very good. Let's open up our books. Hopefully you all took a, a blue minimus book home. Minimus secundus, you know what that means, right? The second minimus secundus, right. All right, so turn to uh, page number 34, chapter number five. I'm gonna turn on the CD and we'll listen to chapter five. Roman and Britons. Britons are bad. Or we will listen to chapter five in this one. I forgot to change the CD. So pop this one out and put in the one for minima secundus. So much for getting ready for that one. All right, here we go. Minimus Secundus, Chapter 5. November. News from near and far. Sad news. Flavius has been visiting the soldiers in the fortress. Chapter 5. He has heard some sad news. Box 1. Caris tua, cur tam Christus est? Quaducius mortuus est. Quis ducius est? Lucius Ducius Rufinus, miles optimus erat. Sing if there erat. Quid sing if there est? Sing if there signum in proelium portat. Box sing four. Sing if there croque stipendium curat. Sing if there stipendium sub sacellulo custodit. Five. Mihi placet sculpture et optimum invenire. Flores celerate exit. Flavius officinam intra. Salve. Salve. Quid vis? Signifer nomine Lucius Ducius Rufinus mortuus est. Volte titulum splendidum facere. Et a vero. Facere est mihi titulum sculpere. Flavius gives the sculptor the details to carve on the tomb. The sculptor begins immediately. Box nine. Vol sculptorum spectare. Tibi licet sculptorum spectare. Paucos postiae. Flavius et lepidina et lupus at sculptorum lewellium. Ecce signum. Ecce parari. Ehu. Ducius juvenis erat. All right, that was chapter five. There are some interesting words in here. And 
I would like for you to pause the video and figure out what it means on your own. That would be a great mental exercise. All right. Then I will come back and tell you what they mean. There's a couple of words in here that you should know. Erat is the past tense of est. What does est mean? Right, is, so erat is was. It tells you that in the words to help. So use your words to help. Use the words that we've got on our, our set of notes and see if you can get that figured out. And I will tell you what it means. So pause your video. You don't have to write it out. But if you figure it out, and then we'll go through it together. Here we go. So, number one. Carissime kurtan trisi says. She says, dearest, why are you so sad? He says, because Dukius is dead. They're carrying on a conversation. So then, look at box two. Quis Dukius says. She asks, who is Dukius? He says, Lucius Dukius Rufinus was, there's Erat, was the best soldier. He was the standard bearer. Okay, are you wondering what a standard is? In box three, there's a picture of the standard bearer there. He's got that long stick and it's got some medals on it and some decoration. That was the sign for their group of soldiers. In Exodus and in the Old Testament, we read in the Bible many times about how that the Israelites uh, traveled in groups and they traveled together with their family group. For instance, the Reubenites would travel together and the Gadites, you know, the 12, the 12 tribes of Israel. And they each camped and traveled uh, next to their sign, next to their, uh, oh my goodness, standard. <laughs> that was the word, their standard. So anyway, the standard was simply a sign. So here we go, number three, quid signifet est, who, is a signifier. And then his father answers, the signifier carries the standard into battle. So he goes out in the front and he carries the standard, lets everyone know who's coming. Number four, uh, Flavius continues to tell him what this uh, standard bearer does. The standard bearer looks after, also looks after the pay. So in other words, he's kind of like the treasurer for the group. The standard bearer guards the pay under the chapel. There's a special room where they keep all of the money, the, uh, the pay for the soldiers. Number five, there's the new verb, mihi plaket. Mihi plaket, I want to find, in winere, the last word, so I want to find an excellent sculptor. And Flavius quickly leaves. That was an easy one. Surely you got that one. Number six, he says hello, and the man says hello, what do you want? Flavius enters the office. That's the word, uh, the sentence at the bottom, number seven. Flavius is telling the man what he wants, and here's what he wants. The standard bearer by name, Lucius Ducius Rufinus, is dead. I want you to make, the last word in the sentence is facchiere, I want you to make a splendid inscription. And the man answers him, yes, it's easy for me to do that. It's easy for me to carve, uh, a, for me to carve the inscription. Box eight is English, no need to translate there. Number nine, Rufus says, I want to watch the sculptor. And his mother answers him, you may. There it is, tibi liket, like we did here in this sentence. You may watch the sculptor. Box nine at the bottom, pocos post dies. All right, there's a new word. We've never seen that one before. It's in the words to help. Pocos is an adjective that means a few. So a few days later, or a few days after, Flavius and Lepidina and Rufus return to the sculptor. And he has finished this tombstone that he wants for Lucius. And uh, Rufus and Lepidina are looking at it. And Rufus is impressed, thinks it looks great. He says, look, look at the, the standard. Look at those medals. And his mother says, oh dear, Ducius was a young man. He was young, very young, too young to die. And in fact, I want you to read this on your own. I'm not gonna take video time for this, but on page 37, you should read through that. It's very interesting 
about this man who actually lived and of course um, the lady Barbara Bell who wrote Barbara yes Barbara Bell who is the author of this curriculum and this story she made this story to go with the information that they got on this man's tombstone so make sure you read through that it's very interesting and you can also read and look at some of the letters that are and uh, Roman numerals that are actually there on the tombstone so, page 36, grasping the grammar. Do you remember what grammar is? Hope so. Grammar, anyone, anyone, do you remember? Alyssa, Alyssa remembers, yes. Grammar is how a language works. You're learning the prepositions in English. You're learning how our language works. Well, here's a little, another little tidbit for how the, gra uh, the grammar of the Latin language works. Page 36, in the picture story, there are two new impersonal verbs. We talked about them, plocket and leaket. They can be used with other words besides the mihi and the tibi. Uh, the literal, tr literal translation of these two verbs is, it is pleasing to me and it is permitted for you, uh, whichever word is being used with it. But people don't talk like that. Our translation into English needs to sound natural as well as being accurate. So it's much better to translate these verbs as, I want or, and you can, or you are allowed. All right, then there's some more Latin roots sentences there. You can figure those out on your own. They are pretty interesting, and those words, those root words can be found in, the Latin root words can be found in this story. All right, I hope you enjoyed the review lesson for today and getting back into Latin and translating. Remember, I've told you before, but translating and learning Latin and thinking about Latin and uh, learning your words, it's kind of like PE for your brain. Remember, if we don't go outside and exercise and do jumping jacks and run around and get some physical exercise, our muscles are gonna turn to mush. Right, Don't we don't want that. And if you don't ever work your brain, it's gonna turn to mush too. So. Get that Latin book out and read through it. Read the stories in Latin and translate them. It's good for your mind too. And I'll see you next time. Walete de Scipuli. Let's say Genesis 1-1 as I finish. Ready? Genesis 1-1. In principio creavit Deus caelum et terum. Wale and goodbye for now.